Hi, David Olavsky. Welcome to the Parsha in five, where in five minutes, give or take, we give you a little thought for the Parsha. Sometimes it goes all the way up to six minutes because we live in inflationary times. Uh, actually, we should be downsizing. You know, you should get for the same five minutes less than that. But what can I tell you here at the Rebbe Olavsky Show? We're always there to give you a little extra. Yeah. And uh, Parsha's Yisrael was, of course, the Parsha of Matan Torah. But it starts with the Yisrael. Now it makes sense because Yisrael represents the people who come to join the Jewish people throughout history. Gereat Sedek, as we say in Shemona Esrei, those who come and join with us. Yisrael is the epitome of the Ger, or if you have a reading vocabulary, the epitome of the Ger, who comes and makes his lot with the Jewish people. And um, there's a Rashi right at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, it says, Yisro heard. Ma Shmua Shoma Uba. What did he hear that made him come? Krias uh, Yamsuf and Mohammed Samalik. Okay. So the Mephoshi Rashi asks, why those two things? Uh, the man had already started to fall. The Esamakos and Mitzrayim, the so many Nisim had taken place. There were things. Why are you focusing on these two aspects? So the Briska Rav says because these were two things that everybody knew about firsthand. Because at Kriyas Yamsuf, it wasn't just that the sea split. All waters of the world split. You were drinking a coffee and it's split in half and you had to figure out which half to drink. You know what I'm saying? Everything split in half. All the waters of the world. So everybody knew about Kriyas Yamsuf. And by Muhammad Zemalek, Rashi says that the sun stood still for Moshe as it did later for Yahushua. So everyone knew. Because they're looking at their watches and going, yeah, I thought sunset was like a half an hour ago. Yeah. It's still daylight. What's going on here? Yeah. So, uh, so this was everyone could know about it. But Chaim uh, Shmulavis gives a different answer. He says, you have to be Medayik and Rashi. It's not what did Yisro hear and decide to become Jewish or that impressed him. Ma Shmua Shama Uba, what inspired him to come? And he says it was the juxtaposition, the connection between Kriyas Yamsuf and Melchamah uh, Samalik. Because by Kriyas Yamsuf, as we say in Az Yashir, the whole world was taken with fear. Yeah, people of Canaan melted. People were confused. People, this, the, the whole world was thrown into turmoil. How do you fight a people who can employ the forces of nature? Because it doesn't matter how many spears and chariots I have if I can drop the sea on top of you. So that's it. Nobody would have ever started up with a Jew. Their inspiration was so total that they nobody would ever have lifted a finger up against a Jew. Except for a Malik. And a Malik were the first suicide bombers. They said, we will attack the Jewish people, knowing we'll be destroyed, but we'll clear the way for other people. As the Chazal say, Someone throws himself into an ambatya rosechas, a boiling bathtub that no one can go into because it's so hot. And I say, I will go in. I know I will be burnt, but I'll cool it off for the next person. That was a Malik's intention to destroy the fear that everyone had of the Jewish people and say, my gosh, you can kill them. You can attack them. And that opened it all up. So Yisro saw how the whole world was so moved 
And then he saw how everybody lost it. Muhammad Amalek, he said, unless I do something dramatic now, I will never have it happen. You have to act when the inspiration hits you or you will lose it. Many times we see people who experience miracles and they recognize their miracles and it moves them. And they say, I'm going to do something. I'm going to make a change. But if they don't, then time goes on and people forget. How many times when I was an NCSY would I run a kumzitz and everyone would be sitting on the floor in the dark, the candles burning and music playing and people telling stories. And people were very moved. And then the lights come on. People get up and brush themselves off and go on as if nothing ever happened. And that's what Yisro saw that caused him to become a Jew. If I don't do something now, I will also lose it. My friends, let's take the inspiration and turn it into Misa. Yeah, someone told me they once uh, rented their apartment of uh, Don Segel. And uh, at the end, when he was leaving, he said, you appreciate your view, this beautiful view. So the fellow looks out the window. He says, yeah, it's nice. He goes, no, no, no. You don't appreciate it. I knew when I saw it the first time how breathtaking it was. And every morning when I got up and I looked out the window, I would say, uh, I would say something to it. I would make it actualize that I remember it's real. We have to take the inspiration and turn it into Lamaisa in our lives. Shabbos.